Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. In this YouTube I'm going to demonstrate and explain the 12 settings you can change on the voices of an E463 keyboard. Here's the overview. You can change a voice's volume, octave, pan, reverb depth, chorus depth, attack time, release time, filter cutoff, filter residence, harmony, arpeggio, and digital signal processing. I'm going to go through each one of these in details and after I have explained them then I will go live on the keyboard so that you can hear what these do. There are 758 voices in the E463 keyboard and all 12 of these settings can be changed on all 758 of these voices. So this gives you a tremendous amount of variety in your keyboard. Let me preview the buttons that I will be using. One of the most important buttons that I'll use a lot is the function button. And you simply reach out and tap this. This button has two ways you can use it. You can tap it or you can press and hold it. In these settings, we need to just tap the button. And then to move from one function to another, we use these category buttons. And once you have gone to one of the functions, you will use the rotary dial to select the setting inside that particular function. I have done a YouTube just on the function button. So if you want to know about how this button really works and what all of these functions are, go and watch my function YouTube. I will be talking about the digital signal processing button and it's labeled DSP. Now in this case we will press and hold this button when it comes time to setting the DSP. Once the DSP is turned on, these two, these two knobs over on the lower left hand corner of the keyboard, they will control the DSP. And you use this button and we need to select number three. I have done a YouTube just on the digital signal processing. So if you want to know all about DSP, go and watch my YouTube that explains it all. So let's begin. Volume. This is function number 11 and once you select it, you can go from 000 up to 127. 000 is full silent. 127 is maximum volume. And I often use this because we're talking about the volume of the main voice. So Throughout the rest of this video, all I'm talking about is the main voice, which is played by your right hand. I almost always want this set at 127 because I want to be able to hear the main voice in my right hand. That's going to be playing the, the melody. And I want to be sure that the style played by my left hand doesn't drown out the volume of my melody. So typically, I set the volume of the main voice at 127. Octave. This is function number 12. The octave goes from minus 2 to plus 2. And what this lets me do is transpose the entire voice up and down four octaves. And why would I want to do that? Maybe the song is uh, just too high or the voice that I'm playing is too high and so I can come in here and lower the octave of my main voice without changing anything else. Pan. 
This is function number 13, and this goes from 0, 0, 0 up to 127. And by the way, to change these numbers, you will use the rotary dial. So once you call up the function, use the rotary dial to select which number you want. 0, 0, 0 is all of the sound out of the left speaker. And 127 is all of the sound out of the right speaker. So if you set it at 064, that's in the middle. And the sound is out of both speakers equally. Next is reverb depth. And I've done an entire YouTube on reverb. This is function number 14. And once again, it goes from 000 up to 127, and you use the rotary dial to dial in how much reverb do you want. And I have done an entire YouTube just on reverb. Next is function number 15. This is chorus depth. And once again, it goes from 0 to 127. Chorus is... it's puts a richness, a depth into the voice. For example, if you have a solo singer and they sing a song, and then I bring in 10 or 15 chorus members and they sing exactly the same notes, it sounds different. We know the difference between a solo singer and a choir. And that's what chorus does. It sort of takes a solo voice and turns it into more of a choir sound, much richer, much fuller. Function number 16 is attack time. The attack time goes from 000 up to 127. The higher the number, the slower the attack time. An attack is how long it takes the voice sound to reach full volume once a key is pressed. So, typically, I use attack time on things like violins and strings because I don't want the volume to be instantaneously high. I want it to swell after I press the key. So, attack time lets me uh, control how long does it take the volume to come to full sound. And as I say, typically, I use this on strings like violins or string sections or cellos. Release time is just the opposite. The release time goes from 000 up to 127. The higher the number, the slower the release time. And release is how long it takes the voice sound to decay away once the key is released. So attack and release are the opposite sides of the coin. Attack is how long does it take to come up in volume, and release is how long does it take to decay away to total silence. And once again, I use release typically on my strings. Function number 18 is filter cutoff. The filter cutoff goes from 0 to 127, and the higher the number, the higher the frequency of the cutoff. Now, this is kind of hard to understand. It's kind of techy and geeky. High numbers are bright and crisp voices, and low numbers are muted and dull, because what you do is, as you dial down the number, uh, you are cutting off the high frequencies, and all you have are the low frequencies, the bass frequencies. So whatever instrument, whatever voice you've called up, is going to sound uh, duller, muted, in a low filter cutoff. Filter resonance. This is function number 19, and once again, it goes from 0 up to 127. The higher the number the brighter the sound of the voice. Low numbers are darker, muted, subdued sounding voices. And these are one of the things that you just have to play with it. There's no way I can tell you what it needs to be. This is a real personal 
um, opinion. You get to choose what you think that voice should sound like. Typically, I use high numbers. I want to hear all of the frequencies of that voice. If I have a trumpet or a violin, I want to hear those high frequencies. That's what makes a trumpet a trumpet. That's what makes a violin a violin. So I almost always set this at 127, but you can change it if you want. Harmony. Press and hold the harmony arpeggio button, and harmony goes from 1 to 26. And here they are. Harmony number one is a duet. So if I press a key, it plays two keys in harmony. Number two is a trio. Number three is four voices. So I press a C and it plays three other keys, three other notes. Four is country harmony. That's the, that's the harmony that all these country western singers use. And five is an octave. If I press a, a key, it takes the same key one, high, one octave higher and plays that. These are trills. So harmony number six through 12 are trill notes. And this will make more sense when I demonstrate this. Harmony number 13 through number 19 is tremolo. Tremolo is that wavering sound. It's the wah, 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 wah. And what this does is it lets me control how fast that uh, wavering is. Does it go wah, 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 wah? Or does it go wah, 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 wah? And the higher the number, the faster the wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Technical term, wah, wah, wah. And finally is echo. You play a note and you hear it echoed. And this controls how fast does that echo come back and how long does it last. This will make more sense when you hear it at the end of this video. Okay, that's the harmony, 1 to 26. Arpeggio. Now this is a little confusing. There are two different ways to get an arpeggio on the E463. Let me talk about the other way that I'm not going to demonstrate. Voices number 262 to voice number 301, these all have arpeggio built into them. So, for example, voice 264 is a peccato strings, violin strings, but voice of arpeggio, I'm sorry, voice number 270 is a piano with arpeggio. And then we get down here, uh, voice number 280 has an organ with arpeggio in it. And then uh, over here, the uh, voice number 300 has a guitar with arpeggio. So this is one way. You just call up one of these voices, and not only do you get the voice, but you get arpeggio built into it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using the arpeggio button. So what you want to do is press and hold the harmony arpeggio button. And arpeggio goes from 027 all the way up to 176. There's almost 150 arpeggios. It's mind boggling. And you can apply all of these arpeggios to any of the 758 voices. So that harmony button is also used to select the arpeggios. When you go from 1 to 26, you're selecting the harmony. But when you hit number 27, you are into the arpeggios all the way up to 176. Here's what they look like. I know it's, it's hard to read, but these are the names of the arpeggios. And in a lot of cases, the names don't really tell, tell you anything. So here's from 27 to 90, and here's the rest of them. It's overwhelming. I mean, it would take you hours 
to go through and sample all of the arpeggios that you could apply to a voice. Quite frankly, I have never, ever, ever heard all of the arpeggios on my keyboard. I've never sat down and just gone through every one of the 151 arpeggios. Quite frankly, I don't care about most of them. I don't use arpeggios very much, practically never, but they're there. You can apply any arpeggio to any of the 758 voices in the E460 in the E463. That gives you 112,942 different combinations, different voices. Like I said, it's kind of overwhelming. But it arpeggios lets you do things that you physically, humanly couldn't do on a keyboard. I have done a YouTube video just on arpeggios if you want to know more about this. Digital signal processing. Press and hold the DSP button. Digital signal processing goes from 0, 1 to 10. There's only 10 settings. And the button is called DSP on the keyboard. DSP. So here they are. Rotary speaker, distortion one, distortion two, chorus, something called a flanger, something called a phaser, tremolo, auto pan. This is interesting. Auto pan means the sound bounces back and forth from the left speaker to the right speaker. And with those two knobs that I told you about on the left-hand corner of the keyboard, you can control how fast the sound bounces back and forth. Quite frankly, I've never used it. I've never had a song that I wanted the sound of the main voice to bounce back and forth. Just not something I've ever needed to do. Low-pass filter and high-pass filter. These will make a lot more sense when you hear what they do. And in the last part of the video, I'll play some voices and let you hear these things. So let's go live to the E463 keyboard and let's hear these 12 settings being played. So here I am at the E463 keyboard and I'm ready to demonstrate the 12 settings that you can make to the voice of this keyboard. And I've already gone ahead and punched the function and I've called up function number 011, which is the volume. This is the volume of the main voice. Right now it's set on 122. Now it's set on 92. Now it's set on 48. Now it's set on 14, and this is 0, 0. So, very simply, it controls the volume of your main voice, your right-hand voice. And I use this a lot. I usually set the volume at 127 on the main voice. That way I know it will not be overshadowed and drowned out by the style in my left hand. Okay, Next, I'm hitting the category, and I've gone to function 012, which is octave. I've called up octave, and it's setting at zero. Now I'm going to dial it up to one. And now two. One. Zero. Minus one, minus two. So octave raises and lowers the entire keyboard anywhere from minus two octaves up to plus two octaves. Okay? Next is pan. Now I'm not recording in stereo, so there's no reason to demonstrate this to you. What pan does is it moves the music. Uh, the, the sound of the voice out the left speaker or the right speaker. 
if you dial in 000, all of the sound of the main voice comes out of the left speaker. If you dial in 127, all of the sound comes out of the right speaker. If you dial in a pan of 064 in the middle, the sound of the main voice comes out of both speakers equally. That's pan. Okay, now let's go to reverb. And I've got reverb set and it's showing 000. I'm going to start dialing in the reverb. Now you can begin to hear it. I'm at 70. I'm at 117. I'm at zero. Okay, that's reverb. Next is chorus. And I'm going to dial in chorus of zero, zero, zero. And now I'll start dialing it up. That's full chorus. That's zero. It's, it's rather subtle, but it adds a, a thickness, a richness, a brightness to the sound. And by the way, I have done an entire YouTube tutorial on reverb and on chorus that you can go and watch. Next is attack. I'm going to start with uh, attack of zero, zero, zero. Attack is how long does it take the sound to come up to full volume once I press a key. This is attack time of zero. It's instant. The minute I hit it, it's at full volume. Now let me dial in, No, oh, I don't know, about uh, 80. Takes a long time. Let me dial in uh, 113. Watch this. Let's go all the way up to 127. Watch how long it takes the sound to come up. Ready? Took seven or eight seconds for the sound to come up. Let's go the other way. Zero, zero, zero. Instant. 127. Okay, that's attack. Next is release time. And release is just the opposite. Let me set up a string. All right, I'm going to put in a release of zero, zero, zero. The minute I let go, it stops. The sound stops. I'm going to dial in, oh, about uh, 60. I'm going to dial in about 100. I'm going to dial in full 127. Look how long. I'll take it. Just do it again. Ready? Watch how long it takes for this sound to decay away. Ready? Go. It goes on forever and ever and ever. That's release time. How long does it take once you let go? Once you let go, how long before it's totally silent? Release time. Next is filter cutoff, and I'll start with the zero, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. 
you know what, let's go back and uh, set the release to uh, 64. Okay, now we'll go back to cut off. I'm set at zero, zero, zero. I'm now at 30. I'm now at 60. I'm now at, at 890. That's full filter cut off. Here's zero. So the lower the number, the, the more mellow, the more muted the sound of the voice. All right. Let's talk about resonance. Uh, the resonance right now. Oops. I want to go back and uh, set the cutoff at 64 right in the middle. Okay. All right. Here's... Here's resonance. That's 64. Let's dial it away. That's full. Here's zero, zero. Here's full. It's crisper. It's brighter. Okay? That's what resonance does. Okay, next is Harmony. I have done an entire YouTube tutorial just on Harmony on this keyboard. So Harmony is the Harmony Arpeggio button, as I said in my slideshow. I'm going to press and hold it. Ready? Okay. And it came up and it says it's a duet. Okay. That's with duet. Tell you what, let's go to piano. That's the way it sounds normal. This is with duet. Okay, trio. That's the way it sounds normal. Let's go to block. Block is four. What it does is it looks at your left hand to see what chord you're playing and then it applies that chord to your single finger. So this chord is playing here, but playing the same note, but changing my left hand. Okay, that's block harmony. Next is country, and this is the harmony that is used in country western songs. That's the best way to describe it. Next is octave. Let me turn it off. Let me turn it on. What it's doing is I play this note. It goes down one octave and plays the same note one octave lower. That's without. So I'm hitting two notes, even though I'm only playing one note. That's octave, okay? Trill. 
trill is two notes, two keys at the same time, and it bounces back and forth between them. So I just sit here and hold it, and it goes back and forth. This is trill one-sixth. Let's speed it up a little bit. This is trill one-eighth. Let's go a little faster. This is trill one-twelfth. A little faster yet, trill one-sixteenth. A little faster yet, trill one twenty fourth. Okay, a little faster yet, thirty two. All right, this is tremolo. That's that wavering sound, all right? That's tremolo one-fourth. Let's speed it up a little bit. Tremolo one-sixth. All right, tremolo one-eighth. Okay, tremolo one-twelfth. Okay, a little faster yet, and I'm dialing it with the rotary dial, 1 16th trill. Okay, 1 24th. All right, and the fastest of all, trill 1 32nd. Okay, that's trill. Next is echo. And this is harmony number 20, 0 to 0. Here's echo 1 fourth. All right, here is 1 sixth. Here is 1 eighth echo. Here's echo one twelfth. Echo one sixteenth. Echo one twenty fourth. And the fastest of all, echo one thirty second. Okay. So those are the harmonies. Next is arpeggio. And I've done a complete YouTube video on arpeggio. And did I mention I've done one on harmony as well? So um, I've taken some notes here. Let me go see which ones I want to show. Now there's almost there's over 150 arpeggios, so I'm not, I'm only going to show you three or four. Here is arpeggio number 029, and it's called up and down. Uh, let me see, number 58. Here is arpeggio number 58. Okay, here is 
is arpeggio number 62 called Ballad. Let me change to a, uh, a guitar and go to arpeggio number 95, which is a guitar. And the name of that is finger pickings. So that arpeggio is great for a guitar. So there's 150 different arpeggios that you can apply to any one of the 758 voices. All right, and I've done a whole YouTube just on arpeggio. And the last thing I want to show you is DSP, Digital Signal Processing. To turn it on, you press and hold the DSP button on the keyboard. And the first thing that comes up is rotary speaker, setting 01. So I've got a violin in my left hand, and I'm going to crank in the rotary speaker, and you'll hear it start to waver. Hear that? Woo, 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 a little faster. Going a little faster. faster yet. So with the A and B button I control how much of the effect do I want to hear and with the A knob I control how fast does that speaker spin. Does it go fast or slow? And it's me turning knob A that controls the speed of the rotary speaker. Next is distortion. That's distortion one. Here is distortion two. And there's no way I can tell you what you're going to do with this. You just have to play with it and decide, is that a sound I would like one of my voices to make? Quite frankly, I have never ever used Distortion 1 or Distortion 2 in any of my songs. Next is Chorus. I'll turn it all off. This is without. This is with. Can't say that I like that very much. <laughs> That's the chorus effect. All right. Next is flanger. Let's turn it off first. Once again, knob A and knob B, I'm playing with those, and you can adjust it to till you come up with something you think is appropriate. All right, next is phaser. Let me turn it all off. some techno kind of music that might be a sound that you're after. That's the phaser. Okay, what's next? Now here's something I could use. Tremolo. I'm going to turn it all off.
Now with the A knob, I control how much tremolo, how fast it is. Listen. Let's go a little faster. Let's go a little faster yet. So the A knob controls how fast is the tremolo. Okay. Auto pan. I'm not going to bother to demonstrate this unless I recorded in stereo, which I didn't, and unless you had stereo headphones, which most of us don't. But what it does is it bounces the sound of the voice back and forth. And with the A and B knobs, I can control how fast that voice moves from the left to the right speaker. Auto pan. Okay, this is LPF, low pass filter. Let's turn everything off. Okay, and finally high pass filter. Let's turn everything off. say that I like it. I've never used the low pass or the high pass filters in any of my voices, but it's there if you want to play with it. So those are the 12 different settings that you can apply to any of the 758 voices that come in the E463 keyboard. I hope you have found this helpful. If you have, go make some music.